I'm Shane, and welcome back to Relative Time. Today, we're going to go over an experiment I've been conducting this week. I love the smell of science in the morning. Now, in the past, when I've looked into Seiko 5s, and specifically the 7S26 movement, I'd seen it commented a few times that Seiko didn't include hand winding because they didn't really think it was necessary, that the efficiency of their magic lever auto winding system, which is sometimes referred to as magic fingers, was so good they didn't really see the point. Now I don't know if that's true or not, but I thought it would be interesting to test the efficiency of my SNK805, and thus this experiment was born. The main point of this experiment is to test the efficiency of Seiko's 7S26 movement. Thus our main test subject is a Seiko SNK805. In addition, we have other watches that will be tested in the same fashion, and then compared to the SNK. This group is the main test group. In addition to the SNK, we have a Seiko SRPB89K with a 4R35 movement, which is similar to the 7S26, but with hacking and hand winding. It's also essentially the same as a Seiko NH35A movement. Next, we have a cult classic, the Citizen Promaster, NY0040-17L, with a Miyota 8203A movement. We also have a Hamilton Khaki Aviation with an ETA 2842. And as I said, this is the main test group, as it better represents the direct competition to Seiko's 7S26 movement but I decided to test some others at the same time, more for the sake of curiosity. So in the second group, which we'll call Group Y, as in why not, we have a Seiko Kinetic GMT, the Sun 055. My Vostok Amphibia with the 2416 movement, a Swatch System 51, and the Chinese High Beat Star King. Now, there are some flaws to this experiment that prevent it from really being truly scientific. The first of which is that all of the watches should be exactly the same age, which most of these are close, but they're not exactly the same. And second, each watch really should have the same features as well as having the same beat rate, which in this group, they're not even close. But I'm hoping to at least gain some insight from the results anyways. Now the experimental procedure is rather simple. First, shake the watch in a circular fashion in order to give it some power. And this will be done for exactly one minute. Then, before it's placed down, the time will be set to midnight. When the watch stops moving, the time elapsed is recorded, and then the experiment is repeated for a total of three times. Or, at least that was the plan. And for the most part, that's what happened. But there were a few hiccups, almost immediately. After a whopping six minutes, I noticed that the kinetic was already stopped. Now the kinetic is an entirely different beast from all the others. But here's the results and I'm not really sure how to interpret it. Overall I wound up testing it a total of six times rather than the three, and in each instance it ran a little longer and a little longer. So I'm not sure if I was just getting better at shaking it, or if it was just really that dead, and after each run, there was more and more residual power in its battery. 
And along the same lines, I had a few issue with the Miyota movements, which are unidirectional and require the rotor to be swung counterclockwise. The first couple tests, I don't think I was shaking it in the right direction. I failed to realize that counterclockwise or anti-clockwise when you're looking at the face of the clock is actually clockwise for the rotor behind it. Think of trying to tighten a screw underneath a table when you're looking down upon it. It's the mirror image. And I wound up adding another Miyota movement, which is a Miyota 8215, which is in the Cadison Conquest homage. And I eventually wound up adding a few tests for both of them, and I only averaged the last three once I was sure I was shaking both of them properly. And lastly, the Swatch System 51, which doesn't have a normal pendulum-like rotor, but rather this spinny disc thing. After a few trial tests, shall we say, I discovered two things. One, it's actually a unidirectional rotor, which I think wants to go clockwise. And two, it performs more of a flick of the wrist to get the rotor spinning rather than a shake. And even with getting a few bugs worked out, I would have preferred the results if they were a little more consistent with each watch. But I will say that both of the Seiko Autos were the most consistent. And both the 7S26 and the 4R35 had an average of 9 hours and 35 minutes. The Edda in the Hamilton was close to that as well, but the Citizen Miyota fell short with an average closer to 6 hours. As for Group Y, well, I've already discussed the Kinetic, but I was impressed to see that my Vostok was almost keeping up with the Seikos. Although, I almost expected it to be a little better, with the idea that a lower beat movement might be more efficient with the power it has stored up. The average for the swatch was lower, but that was probably due to some inconsistencies, as the last two tests were actually pretty close to the Seikos. And lastly, the Star King high beat, which really fell short with an average just under five hours although I did actually expect it to be a little less than the others. Similar to my thoughts about the low beat Vostok, I would have thought the higher beat Star King would use more power. Now the Seiko's auto winding system is efficient, to that there's no doubt, but I'm not sure I could say that it's so efficient it couldn't use hand winding. And part of that is actually my fault with a lack of consistency on the results of some of the other watches. But I was impressed with the consistency of the results that were on both Seikos. And what I was more impressed with was the Hamilton and its Etta movement, where not only was it as consistent and lasted as long, but it also has a high beat movement compared to the Seikos. Now to wrap this up. I decided to conduct one final experiment, one that would compare the Seiko Shake directly to hand winding. But my final test was simply to hand wind each watch, which was capable of hand winding, for 20 seconds, and then compare runtime to a full minute of the Seiko Shake. And I only conducted this experiment once as I was more interested in how the group would do as a whole, compared to the SNK and its 7S26 movement. And the results were pretty much as I expected. Now, as of filming this, each watch that I've hand wound, with the exception of the Star King, is still going and we've just gone past 36 hours. Now, this is in comparison to nine to 10 hours of runtime you get from doing a full minute of the Seiko Shake. Although the ultimate efficiency with an automatic watch is just to wear it and not really worry about it. But not having hand winding, that only really works if you only own and wear one watch. Now I do wish that Seiko 
would upgrade some of their older models, but I don't think they're going to. I think they're more in the mindset of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Which, if you're in the know, is kind of a hard pill to swallow, because you know that you can get a non-Seiko watch with a Seiko NH35 movement in it for just a little bit more than you can get a Seiko with their older 7S26 movement in it. Well, that's the experiment. Now, I hope you enjoyed yourself, or at the very least, you learned something. And if you did, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe below, as well as leave a comment on what you think about all this, as well as if you have any ideas for other little experiments for me to try. And as always, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next time. That is really watered down right now.